What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. Over the past weekend, we had Danny Swift Garcia make his debut at the welterweight division when he faced Paulie Malinanji. Now, this fight was a one-sided fight that Danny Garcia easily won. It was stopped in the ninth round when the referee decided that he saw enough. Danny Garcia basically dominated Paulie Malinanji in a pretty good performance but it was a performance that I wasn't really too impressed with. I mean, Danny Garcia promised us that he would look stronger, quicker, and better on his feet at 147. And we didn't see that. We saw the same Danny Garcia that we saw in his past couple of fights. We didn't see the Danny Garcia that blew out a faded warrior in Eric Morales at the Barclays Center a few years ago. That Danny Garcia was the one that we was looking for to basically knock out Paulie Malinaji the way Sean Porter destroyed them in four rounds. We saw Danny just move slowly and also wing those shots like he always does and basically show no footwork whatsoever. I mean, Paulie was a tough competitor. He showed that Brooklyn heart. He was there boxing all the way, and he didn't want to give up, but he was basically outclassed in that fight because he was up against a young, strong fighter that um, basically was just winning the fight every round. Now, Danny Garcia said that he wants to fight bigger and better fights, and we have to see what his manager is going to do, Al Heyman, in getting him bigger fights in the welterweight division. We want to see him against the Keith Thurmans and the um, Marcos Madonna fighters, guys like Sean Porter, those type of fighters, to really prove himself in this weight class as one of the best. You know, Danny Garcia, you know, he's making these promises that he's going to look spectacular at welterweight, and this was a soft-touch opponent for him. You know, he got the win, he did what, what he was supposed to do, and he got the job done, and that was most important. But um, I just wasn't impressed by his performance. I was looking for a much better um, Danny Garcia because... The performances that he had against Mauricio Herrera and Lamar Peterson, we all know that he lost those fights and he didn't look impressive in those fights. So we was looking for that knockout Danny Garcia. I mean, the stoppage due to the referee was basically a mercy stoppage. It wasn't like Paulie was badly hurt. He was rocked in this fight. It wasn't that he got dropped or knocked out. It was basically... He was losing the fight all the way, and it didn't make sense for him to take any more punishment going into the late rounds, so the referee decided to stop the fight. You got to give Paulie credit. I mean, this guy is a two-time world champion at 140 and 147, and he's had a really good career as a professional boxer. I wish him all the best. He announced his retirement at the Barclays Center, his home in Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn loves this guy. He is... A true, true class act. I mean, we love the trash talking. We love the entertainment he has given us throughout the years. I mean, he's a tough, tough guy with tremendous heart. And we love to see guys like that give it their all. And he's an excellent commentator. And I love to see him in the future in the Hall of Fame one day for his contributions in boxing. And I think he's going to become a great commentator at ringside. So I can't wait to see him talk about all the future fights that are going to come. Wish him all the best luck in the world. As for Danny Garcia, we have to see what's up next for him. Now, Garcia likes to say, I leave it up to my manager, Al Heyman, who chooses my fights. I'm tired of hearing all these fighters today say that my manager and my promoter are the ones that choose my fights for me. I mean, when did this become a trend? This is ridiculous. I mean, these guys should be putting their foot down and say, I am the boss. The fighter is the boss. You guys work for me. I mean, the manager and the promoter is part of the team that makes sure that these guys get good matches. These fighters should be able to say to these guys, you guys work for me, and I want to fight who the public wants me to fight. I want to fight the very best out there, the top guys out there. I'm the boss. I mean, these guys need to grow some bigger balls and put their foot down instead of letting their manager and promoter let them fight guys like Joe Schmo, which is an easy fight in order to get a nice payday. I mean, at the end of the day, you guys want to build a legacy and be remembered in the sport of boxing as one of the best fighters that ever came to lace up the gloves. But moving along on the undercard, 
we had Daniel Jacobs who fought Sergio Moore for a secondary middleweight title. And that fight was a fight that I believe that should not have been made in the first place. But it was an interesting fight when the first round, both men were knocked down. And it was a pretty good fight, I must say. Now, Jacobs looked more hurt than Sergio Mora did when he got knocked down. And I think if Mora had better punching power, he probably could have got Jacobs out of there with a, bit, a little bit more time on the clock. The second round, unfortunately, Sergio Moore got injured when he went down, twisted his ankle. I don't think it was broken. He said it was broken, but I think he would have been a lot more pain. Now, that fight does not deserve a rematch. And Jacobs already said that he's ready to move on to bigger and better things. And he also said that his manager, Al Heyman, would choose his next fight, which is ridiculous. But, uh, you know, Peter Quillen and Danny Jacob, Daniel Jacobs... Both have been strung along by Al Heyman fighting weak opponents because they're going to face each other down the road. And we all know this is going to be at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn in the future. So that's a very good matchup between those two. I think Jacobs is a better technical fighter. And I believe that Quillen is the bigger, stronger, harder puncher. So the fans will be definitely interested in that fight happening. Also, on the undercard, that fight that wasn't televised was Puerto Rican Rafael Vasquez, who scored a sensational first round knockout when he knocked out his opponent. And he improved his record to 16 and 1 with 13 knockouts. I can't wait for this guy to finally get televised on television and get his shot of a world title, possibly in a year from now. But that's my wrap up. I want to thank everybody for watching. Please follow me on Instagram. Join my Facebook boxing page and also please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon, Stan Clay Entertainment. Thanks for watching.